the wall of unequally distributed diseases. How immunology can contribute to one healthy world. Stefan Kaufmann, Max Planck Society, Humboldt Universität. On November 9th, I received a call from a cousin in East Berlin. I interrupted a lab meeting to celebrate. In April 2009, a new pathogen emerged. The swine flu virus, official term pandemic influenza H1N1 2009. As of November, half a million cases have been counted worldwide with about 6,000 deaths. Yet the pandemic was received with high vigilance and so necessary measures were initiated immediately. Seven months later, we already have a vaccine. Actually, almost 6,000 deaths caused by swine flu thus far, slightly more than 0.1% of the 5 million deaths caused by the major plagues HIV, AIDS, malaria and TB every year. A threat, but is it the iceberg or the tip of the iceberg? Let's talk about the pandemic of the past, present and future. The three major pandemics, HIV, AIDS, TB and malaria, mostly afflict people in the developing world, stricken by poverty. Hence, they are diseases of inequality. They afflict the poor far more than the rich. Let us focus on the example of TB today, tuberculosis. Nine million people developed TB disease last year. Every five seconds, one, some, one falls ill. About two million people died. Every 20 seconds, someone dies. This is happening year after year, decade after decade, century after century. Hence, TB is more than a pandemic. It is both spatially and temporally non-restricted. TB anywhere is TB everywhere. This is, however, also the major drawback of TB. We have lived with this court for centuries. We've gotten used to it. We have become complacent. One more figure. One third of the population on this globe are infected with the TB bacillus. This actually is interesting. Two billion people infected, but only 10 million new cases. In TB, only 10% of those who are infected indeed develop disease. The others remain healthy, but latently infected. Their immune system controls the pathogen and prevents disease outbreak, but it fails to eradicate the pathogen. Thus, in one of the most devastating diseases of today and of the past, the immune system actually is highly efficacious in the vast majority of infected individuals and protects them. This is an important lesson. We can learn from the healthy individual how their immune response controls infection. This offers hope that we can learn how to rationally design a vaccine against TB and how we can rationally design biomarkers to understand TB. So why is TB such an enormous threat? Don't we have drugs? Don't we have a vaccine? Let's look back into the past for a minute. 125 years ago, exactly here in Berlin, about 50% of all deaths were caused by TB. TB was then the white plague. Actually, 125 years ago was also the most active time of TB research ever. Here in Berlin in 1882, Robert Koch not only described the etiology of TB, but also the first diagnostic test. 30 years later, between 1906 and 1920, the French scientists Albert Calmet and Camille Guerin developed the attenuated life vaccine Basile Calmet Guerin BCG. In the 1940s, the US scientist Selman Waxman described the first drug, streptomycin. Until the 1960s to 70s, numerous TB drugs were developed. Well done. But afterwards, things became quiet, very quiet. Thus, in 1989, when the wall came down, the industrialized world considered TB history. We forgot the developing world. We forgot HIV AIDS, which has become the driving force of the re-emergence of TB. Today, we still use the diagnostic test developed by Robert Koch in the late 19th century. 
Today we still use the vaccine developed in the early 20th century and today we use the antibiotics, devel antibiotics developed in the 1940s to 70s. This clearly is insufficient. The diagnostic sputum test fails to correctly diagnose TB in about 50%, half of all patients. BCG protects the toddlers, but not their parents. The vaccine is ineffective against the most prevalent form of disease, pulmonary tuberculosis in adults. Rising incidences of multidrug resistant and extensively drug resistant TB render therapy a serious problem. In fact, extensively resistant TB cannot be treated with currently available drugs and is often a death sentence, even in the rich countries. As of today, 50 million people are infected with multi-resistant TB, many of them in Eastern European countries, including those that are members of the EU. The embarrassing conclusion, our inability to control TB today is the result of our complacency over the last 40 years. Change is needed. But please be aware, if we increase our research efforts today, new medicines for TB patients will become available in a decade or so. Incentives for industry, for industry are insufficient to develop new medicines for TB. New partnerships are urgently needed, mostly partnerships between the public and the private domain. As a Max Planck Institute, we are dedicated to our philosophy of excellence in science. No compromise in the quality of our research. But we also follow the needs of society. No compromise in the issues we target. We analyze the problem, not the model. We have exploited basic immunology for rational vaccine design and biomarker design because we are convinced that science can make a difference. Our body has a specialized organ which fights invading pathogens, the immune system. Macrophages monitor our body and engulf and kill the invading pathogens. The TB bacillus hides in these macrophages which should kill it. And therefore the pathogen has evaded the immune response. Lymphocytes also scan our body. They recognize pathogens in a highly specific way. The B lymphocytes recognize pathogens directly and then they produce antibodies that fight the pathogens. The T lymphocytes do not see the pathogens, they recognize the infected cell, that is in our case the macrophage harboring the TB bacillus. T lymphocytes therefore are the prime target of novel vaccination strategies against TB. We have generated a vaccine which induces a qualitatively and quantitatively better T-lymphocyte response against TB. Our vaccine induces profoundly better protection against TB than the current BCG vaccine. Actually, our vaccine construct is a genetically modified BCG. A reminder, BCG is the attenuated live vaccine that's available today which protects children but not their parents. BCG is recognized suboptimally by the immune system because it hides within the host cells. By genetic modification, we made the new recombinant BCG vaccine better visible for the T cells. This is where we stand today. The vaccine is efficacious, the vaccine is safe, approval of required safety level has been achieved as a prerequisite for use in humans. Large-scale production, according to good manufacturing practice, has been accomplished. The vaccine has been licensed to vaccine project management and they sponsor a phase one clinical trial with human volunteers which started summer 2008. The vaccine trial looks extremely promising. Our vaccine is aimed at replacing BCG. Other vaccine candidates in the field are aimed at boosting BCG. In other words, they are given on top of BCG these are subunit vaccines which comprise one or two antigens. Importantly, the most profound effects are expected for combination of the best prime vaccine, perhaps our recombinant vaccine, followed by a boost with the best subunit vaccines. Identification of the best combination vaccine, however, is a long-lasting endeavor. It can take decades before a combination vaccine has completed its passage through the pipeline of clinical trials. Can we accelerate this process? We believe we can. And for this, we need biomarkers. What does this mean? 
A biomarker reflects a biological process, for example, the cause of infection and disease in TB. Hence, it can predict vaccine efficacy. That is, it can show us early in a clinical trial whether a vaccine is efficacious, whether it protects against TB outbreak. We have embarked on a biomarker project with support by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. In our Grand Challenge project, we have combined forces with seven partners in Africa. Two in South Africa, one in Malawi, one in Uganda, two in Ethiopia and one in the Gambia. In addition, seven partners from the US and from the European Union have joined forces. This is the underlying rationale. Understanding the host response which sustains health in contrast to disease outbreak will lead to the rational design of biomarkers for vaccine trials. Recall, more than 90% of those who are infected will never develop disease. Only about 10% will develop active disease. What actually, actually do we do? Well, let me briefly explain. First, the human genome comprises about 30,000 genes. Of these, a handful of genes are differentially activated in healthy infected individuals and patients with active TB disease. And they can be used and are being used as biomarkers for disease and healthness. Second, the blood is full of small molecules which stem from metabolic processes, either from the pathogen or from the host. This is the metabolome. We can use these small metabolites for biomarkers. Third, we have identified a group of antigens of the TB bacillus, which are specifically recognized by the immune system in patients with active TB disease, but not in healthy individuals. We do not believe that a single biomarker can do the job. Rather, a tailor-made, a custom-made biosignature will be used, which comprises a number of the best biomarkers in the different areas. And this is our central study. At the different African sites, individuals are diagnosed with TB. Household contacts of these patients who live together in close contact are followed over two years. Altogether, several thousand household contacts become infected. After two years, only few, about 5%, have developed disease, and 95% remain healthy. During the two-year longitudinal study, blood is drawn at different time points. We interrogate the blood samples for markers which distinguish the protected 95% from the diseased 5%. Based on this, we can design a custom-made biosignature. Our research activities have brought a product, namely the new TB vaccine candidate, from academic research into a clinical trial with our partner, Vaccine Project Management, who receives support from the German Ministry of Science and Technology. Our biomarker studies are supported by the largest foundation in this field, the Bill and the Melinda Gates Foundation. Attracting private companies in this endeavor will be an essential next step to secure further development of our products. Basic research is particularly needed for diseases of low interest to the private sector. These are the diseases of unequal burden to people in poor and rich countries. TB is one of them. It is true, funding for TB is better than ever before. Today, half a billion US dollars is funneled into different aspects of TB research and development globally. Yet, we need to increase our research funding to about 2 billion US dollars annually. Quite a lot, you may say. I would call it a bargain. Why? The cost to treat all TB cases on this globe, that is the cost for drugs, is already about 2 billion US dollars. The total cost adds up to about $20 million if you include all additional costs such as care, lost time at work, etc. So research over the next 10 years will cost about $20 million, billion, and that is exactly the sum and the loss of financial resources are caused by TB every year. Just as our current treatment and prevention measures for TB are based on research done 50 to 20, uh, 125 years ago, today we need to build the basis for medicines in the next decades. Just as the falling walls in Berlin 20 years ago paved the way for an equal Germany, 
the walls have to fall to render diseases of inequality a matter of equal attention and of empathy in the next 20 years. Let me end by acknowledging the photographer Jim Nachtwey, who stated, I have been a witness and these pictures are my testimony. He has given a, given a face to the disease I was talking about. Thank you. <laughs>